Welcome back to another edition of TCM Graduate TV. I'm Kenton Sefcik, registered acupuncturist, and this is Viewer Question Episode 4. And on Viewer Question Episode 1, I had somebody by the name of... Walam Koop, hopefully I pronounced that correctly, asked me if I could do a video on tongue diagnosis basics and review. And I'd love to do a video. Sometimes it's very difficult to answer questions on Instagram or on YouTube or in Facebook groups. So this is a great opportunity for me to show you how I diagnose a tongue. Now there's four things I'm looking for, color, coating, cracking, and shape. Now, before we diagnose a tongue, we almost have to teach our patients how to stick their tongue out at us. Oftentimes, we'll tell patients, please stick your tongue out at me, and they'll stick it out quite vigorously, and they'll end up making it come to a point. Very much like a V. And oftentimes, I have to teach patients, no, relax your tongue, and then show me what it looks like. And then it'll be more like, a normal tongue shape. So we don't want to get a misshapen tongue right off the bat. The other thing is often when I teach this or do a review, I do color, coating, cracking, and shape. But when a patient sticks their tongue out to you in real time, you might notice one of these in a different order. Oh my gosh, look how swollen that tongue is, or that tongue looks like almost like the human brain. There's so many cracks in it. You might see some of those signs or symptoms popping out, not in this order. But to help you organize it in your brain, and likely in my brain, I'm going to review it in this way. So let's erase all of this, and let's start with color. So I look for three primary colors, pale, red, and purple tongues. So a pale tongue can mean two different things. Just by itself, if I tell you that my patient has a pale tongue, we're going to assume that they are normal. But if we combine signs and symptoms and we find out that the patient is cold all the time, performs warm drinks, maybe they have a weak kidney yang pulse, and maybe their tongue is not just pale, but it's wet and pale, it could be yang deficiency. And I'm just writing XU, shu, abbreviating for deficiency using a Chinese word. Red. Red often means heat. And purple often means blood stasis. Heat and blood stasis can occur in specific organ sites. Let me erase this and I'll show you what I mean. There's my tongue. Well, not my tongue, but a tongue. And remember, I don't make a very good artist. I make a great acupuncturist. So looking at this tongue, if a patient has redness on the tip of their tongue, we diagnose this area as heart, and we can likely devise with other signs and symptoms that they have heart fire or heat in that organ. So oftentimes heart eight or heart seven, which fixes everything on the heart anyways, are really great acupuncture points for this. Very rarely, but I have seen it in the clinic, you can get heat kind of going across the lung region or just next to the heart area. So this signifies heat in the lung, and oftentimes we can use lung 10 to treat it. Another common area, of course, are the sides. So that's liver and gallbladder, liver 2, GB44. Again, picking mostly spring acupuncture points to take heat out of the body.
and of course the entire tongue covered in a or being red in color signifies generalized heat in the body so we can use our generalized heat acupuncture points li11 li4 do 14 kind of in their order of being how powerful to least powerful as far as i'm concerned in the clinic because i'm all about those heavy hitters as you are aware the other thing that we need to look for in color is oftentimes patients will have raised papillae or little red dots on their tongue and again we'll diagnose this as heat likely they will be in or specific organ sites such as the heart liver or all over these raised papillae oftentimes are due to long-standing heat and I usually diagnose this as emotional heat so if a patient has lots of red prickles on the tip of their tongue that's how I call them and diagnose them as prickles and they have a very long overflowing pulse in the heart and lung area then I would say yes definitely we have some heart fire some lung heat emotional over or outpouring and we're going to have to treat that with acupuncture herbs etc so it is important that we get control of that so a couple things to do with color again you might see red in specific areas you might see the entire body red or you might see raised papillae specific areas or the entire tongue let's erase this and get into coating we can have a thin coat We can have the opposite of a thin coat. We give a thick coat. We can also have the absence of a coat. So typically we want to see a pale tongue with a thin white coating. That's normal. So thin white, I'm going to write normal. So thin white equals normal. Next, we could have a thin yellow coating. And a thin yellow all by itself on maybe a red tongue or a pale tongue even is just heat. So when you hear thin yellow coat, just think heat. Next, thick. Thick white coat is dampness. A thick yellow coat is dampness plus heat, damp heat. And an absence of a coating, of course, denotes yin deficiency of some sort. And again, we're gonna draw the tongue out and give some examples of how all these things can play with the different organs or it can just be all over the tongue. Now, there's kind of a subpar for absence of a coating. You could have a coating that looks like it's not growing out of the tongue. It's almost like an unrooted coating. Remembering that the coating is like almost like the steam coming off of the rice. So the food inside of us is being cooked and the steam coming off of that comes up through the esophagus and it rests on the tongue and it should look like it's growing out of the tongue like grass and if it's just sitting on the tongue this is a weakness of stomach chi or stomach chi deficiency and it can also infer that maybe there is a stomach yin deficiency that's about to happen this reminds me just to remind you that not unlike looking at a patient's eyes and seeing if they have a little bit of a twinkle in their eye or when we feel the pulse or when we look at the way they dress or carry themselves we want to see that our patient has shen or spirit or life power 
That is the same idea when we look at the tongue. So when a patient sticks their tongue out at us and we look at the coating and it doesn't look like it's growing out of the tongue, it's just kind of sitting there on top, almost like we could just scrape it right off. That tongue doesn't have very good shen. Same thing when we get into, you know, looking at the color or the cracking or the shape or whatever it is, if that tongue doesn't look like it has shen, then again, we're going to start looking at the patient's whole shen as a possibility to treat or ask more questions so we can get a little bit better diagnostic on what they're going through in life or what they've been going through. So color, coating, let's get into cracking after we draw the tongue and go through some specifics. So of course with coating, it can be all over the coat, all over the tongue. And that would be very easy. You've just got a thick yellow coating all over the tongue you see on your patient. That's just damp heat everywhere. Oftentimes we will see damp heat in the lower warmer. which will be a patch back here. We can even see it uh, on the sides. Damp heat in the liver and gallbladder. And oftentimes we'll see it right in the middle warmer, just sitting right there in the middle. So not very often have I seen damp heat specifically on the tip of the tongue or the lung region. It's quite interesting that, you know, same thing with color. You, we don't see a, a, a larger example of red in the lower warmer. It just doesn't kind of happen. And same thing with like a damp heat. You don't generally see it at the tip of the tongue. You're going to see it on the whole tongue or you're going to see it in these specific areas. All right, so color coating, let's get into cracking. So cracking for me is extremely important. I'm not going to draw a list out. I'm just going to go right into the tongue picture. I really care where the patient is having cracking. So oftentimes the yin will become deficient and the coating will come off. And the coating will come off for a long period of time and then the patient's tongue will crack. The, one of the most common cracks that we see is a stomach crack down the middle that does not reach the tip. So a stomach crack, I really like to treat with something like a Ren 12, which is front move of stomach. Stomach 36, of course, is great. So if this stomach crack reaches the tip, it is now called a heart crack. Oftentimes, due to our Western diets and maybe cold smoothies, raw food, you know, that sort of thing, that can lead to a stomach yin deficiency, a stomach crack. However, a heart crack can happen, I've seen in clinic where somebody's had heart damage, so maybe a heart attack, or more likely a patient's going to tell me that they have suffered them having their heart broken by someone. So we can either have a heart crack where the crack is right at the tip or it's a stomach crack that reaches the tip and that's called a heart crack. I like to use Ren 14. And heart seven, of course. The other thing that we'll see in kind of order of what I see it, I see a stomach crack, I see a heart crack, then I can see pitted marks everywhere. And this denotes kidney yin deficiency, just a general yin deficiency. Eventually these cracks will join. And we'll start to see really deep fissures. I always say I almost could put a dime or a piece of money, like stand it up in between the fissures. They're so deep. And oftentimes patients will, the first step to or do, sign of yin deficiency is a patient will tell you, I can't eat pineapple, for example, is too, burns the tongue off. And then of course, when we get to the cracking, it's extremely painful at times. So this is just a general kidney yin deficiency. Of course, kidney three, six. Uh, UB 23, UB 52, Ren 4. Spleen 6, meeting of three yin channels. Lots of great acupuncture points to tonify yin deficiency. And last but not least, I see cracking on the liver area. And the lung area. 
So I see those kind of tail ends. So heart crack, somebody's heart was broken. Lung crack are almost like teardrop cracks. Lung one, UB13, 42, uh, outer lung. Uh, back shield lung and lung nine, really good to treat this sort of thing. I've never really been able to successfully seal up a crack with just acupuncture, it's very difficult. By the time we've gotten to the point where a patient's tongue is cracked, they've had chronic yin deficiency or again, so same thing with the heart crack, somebody's heart's been broken, oftentimes with lung, chronic emphysema, uh, bronchitis multiple times, maybe pneumonia a couple of times, or more often than not, just like the heart, somebody's broke, had, the patients had their heart broken, with the lung, it's grieving and sadness. So they're suffering from long-term grieving and sadness and it ends up kind of cracking their lung and creating these teardrop cracks. I have seen very deep fissures and cracks on the sides of the tongue. And this is somebody who has maybe uh, not so much overwork, like a kidney, maybe overstressed. So overstress, resentment, anger, irritability, chasing kind of the ultimate, the dollar for a very, very long time. I've seen this burn out and then crack and it, uh, it's uh, very painful as well. So we're gonna do liver 14, liver three, UB18, those sort of things. All right, so we're gonna erase cracking and we're gonna get into shape and then I'll do a little bit of a summary towards the end where I'll share some of like, if you've got damp heat and then you've got spleen sheet, you know, it's all these different things and I'll kind of put some stuff together. For shape, the most common shape that I see patients' tongues in is the spleen sheet efficiency shape, uh, showing that it's pushing against the teeth the teeth make an imprint on the tongue, no different than if I sit on my hand and I'm sitting on some corduroy or something like that and I take my hand up and I've got lines all over my hand. So in this very same way, if the tongue is swollen, showing dampness and or phlegm due to spleen sheet efficiency, then it's gonna press against the tongue and the tongue's gonna to imprint on it. So you might be able to, you might want to diagnose this as dampness or phlegm. I diagnose this primarily as spleen chi deficiency, spleen six stomach, stomach 36 combination for spleen chi deficiency. If you want to diagnose it as dampness and phlegm, you can do a spleen nine stomach 40 combo. The other type of shape of course is a thin tongue. So we might have a tongue that even though they're sticking their tongue out and they're not sticking it out vigorously with a point towards the end of it, it might be thin this way. I see this coupling with such diseases as rheumatoid arthritis or other autoimmune and I'll see pitting as well. So not only is the tongue thin, I'm also seeing kidney indeficiency signs. So if you have a patient with a thin tongue, it could be thin width wise or thickness wise. And that's something that you have to be aware of is when the patient's sticking their tongue out this way, kind of maybe turn your head to the side, see if you can get a side view of it. And you want to see if it's thin that way as well as this way. Again, this is kind of like fluid deficiency, so maybe blood deficient and or yin deficiency. Just talked about some uh, kidney yin deficiency, acupuncture points, blood deficiency, the liver stores blood, liver eight is a mother point, it's a great acupuncture point. Spleen six, the spleen holds blood, so it's a great, and plus uh, three yin channel meeting there. Spleen 10, UB17, we've got sea of blood and influential of blood. And just like the kidney acupuncture point, REN4, great acupuncture point, tonifies chi and yang blood, everything. So we've got a swollen tongue, we've got a thin tongue, and also just to note that when a t patient has a, a, th a, a thicker tongue, it might actually be thicker, and it's not just widthways, but tall. Right, so it might be a thicker tongue that way. 
The other shape that you might encounter is where there's a little, almost a little bit of a fork in the tongue. So sometimes this is denoted as having a forked tongue. It's not unlike the hammerhead tongue, which comes out like that. And it doesn't mean that the patient is suffering from mental illness. It could mean that the patient has a propensity towards more mental emotional illness. And it's something that we need to look out for for our patients. And maybe it helps our diagnosis. More times than not, I have seen the forked tongue with bipolar disorder. So keep an eye out with, for that. So there you have it. So we've got color coding, cracking, and shape. Let's erase the board one more time and let's just go through some generalized things that you might see kind of in combination in clinic. All right, here we go. In summary. So let's say we have a patient that has some teeth marks. They have a red tip. They have some prickles on the side of their tongue. They have a stomach crack. And they have a sticky, yucky, yellow coating on the back part of their tongue. So how the heck would we diagnose this? We can start ripping this apart. So color. So the rest of the tongue is in pretty good shape. It's a, it's a pale tongue, so that's normal. But the problem is, is that we've got red on the tip. So we would say that I have heat in that organ. I would just simply chart that as heart fire. So there you go. So color looking okay. Now, Coating. The coating is thin white everywhere except for this rear part. So they've got this sticky, yucky yellow coating on the back part of their tongue or the base of their lower third. And we would say we've got damp heat in the lower warmer. So my abbreviation D slash H or D hyphen H in LW, damp heat in the lower warmer. Color, coating, cracking. So we look at this stomach crack and there's our crack, stomach crack. Now looking at it again, we also have the prickles on the side. So that goes back to color. So we could say that the patient has heart fire and they also have liver fire. And then looking at the shape of the tongue, spleen chi deficiency due to the teeth marks. And then we can come up with some point combinations for that. We want to take the damp heat out. We could do an LI11 spleen and stomach 40 combo. Spleen 9 is a hood C point. It will affect the organ directly if you want it to. You and take more dampness in and phlegm out. You could do a spleen six stomach 36 combo, especially because we have the spleen sheet deficiency. Heart fire, we could do heart eight. Liver fire, we could do liver two. And the stomach crack, we've already got a stomach 36 key or command for abdomen, hood seat, point will affect the organ directly for the stomach. We could do the front move of the stomach, REN12. So heart fire, damp heat in the lower warmer, stomach crack, liver fire, spleen chi deficiency, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 15 acupoints. And there you have it. A big bad review on tongue diagnosis. Thank you so much for the question. If you have another viewer question, let me know and I will do my best to make a video for you.